Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. Today we are going to discuss mounting a platform on the Jetson race car chassis. In addition, a bonus, we're going to talk about sensor selection and components. Let's get started. One of the ways that you can mount the platform is to use standoffs. There are M3 machine screws that hold the Nerf bar to the chassis. So you would use those as the mounting points for the standoff, have four standoffs, and mount the platform on the standoffs. That's the same way that MIT did in the 2015 season car. On the stock rally, on the rear suspension tower, there's a body mount. On the front bumper, there are two posts where the body is mounted. In addition, on the front suspension tower, these parts are interchangeable with other Traxxas models, so they'll use this for a mounting point also. So it turns out you can take this part and mount it to the front suspension. I have one of those here. So you could actually adjust this, mount your platform up here. So that would be an acceptable alternative. Unfortunately, there's these two nubs here that you'd have to grind down and there's no real easy way to actually thread a standoff or something through there. Another Traxxas model uses this to mount its body. So that goes into the same holes as on the front suspension and the rear suspension. And then you can run a standoff through there. So that seems like a good alternative. So another alternative is just to screw the platform straight into the front and rear suspension towers. So let's take a look at putting this arm on here. The first thing we'll do is remove the rear body mount. There are two screws that hold it in. This is just a little two millimeter hex driver. Take that off and put it aside for the moment. So you can fit this either way. I'll go swept back. Use some eight millimeter M3 screws to attach it. So this is a 6815R kit. It contains the arm that we need. I'll go forward with that one. A couple more screws. I have a piece of acrylic I'm going to put it on top of here. This little antenna seems to be in the way. I'll try not to lose that. It's from our receiver. This is basically 3 16th inch acrylic. So this seems to slant down a little bit. Let me put a level on this. And it looks like 
it's going to need a spacer in the front. The other thing that I noticed when I put the plexiglass on here, I'm sorry, the acrylic on here, is that the suspension seems to drop quite a bit, which is kind of surprising. <laughs> so it looks like we're going to have to have stiffer shocks. So in the front, when the suspension is, is at full travel, the wheels hit. As it looks like we're okay in the back. So we we'll definitely need a spacer of some sort here. Another alternative would be to cut around the wheel, wheel so that you can't bottom it on the sheet. Then the second part of this is a more philosophical discussion. It's kind of, so what sensors do you want to actually mount on here? The MIT race car has about a bomb cost, a bill of materials cost of around three to four thousand uh, dollars. That's pretty expensive for experimentation purposes. So what I thought would be interesting is to not only build the MIT race car, but also to build a lower cost version using the same sensors, but not the entire package. It turns out that one of the main component costs is a 2D LiDAR, which is probably $1,800 of the cost. So one, let's take a look at a lower cost version and how we might put that together. We can use a Jetson TK1 as our CPU. We'll need a battery to drive the sensors and the Jetson. And then for our sensor, we can actually choose between a couple of different sensor types. If we're going to run it inside, we might want to use an ASUS Xtion. I think that's how you say it. Uh, unfortunately, these are not being produced anymore, so they usually cost for like 200 bucks or something like that. So that's one alternative. Another alternative is to use a structure I.O. sensor. So these are in production. Grab one out of the box. Here's how big they are. So they're around $350 or so. If we're going to run outside, we might want to use a Z Stereo Labs camera. This is a USB 3.0 camera. The MIT race car has both of these cameras on it. So one is good, relatively close range and the Z starts off at about three feet or a meter or so sensing. So for outside use, you could use the Z and you could probably use it for inside. For inside only use, you could use the structure. It has a little bit different footprint. If you don't want to carry an extra hub with you, then you would use one or the other if you're willing to mount another USB hub on here and it has to be 3.0 if you're going to use the Z then you could use both of these sensors. For wireless communications you'll need antenna and a Wi-Fi card so we'll have to mount those somewhere and both of these sensors are relatively blind close to the vehicle like so if you're coming up to something and are a foot or two away you can run into it without detecting anything so i thought one nice addition might be a single dimensional lidar like a lidar light so you can mount this on one of the cameras and that would give you close range sensing and if something's in front of you, you could sense it. Another idea is to use ultrasonics. 
which would be another common robotic application. Another thing that we'll have to think about is mounting an IMU onto the platform. If we use one like this, we can use I2C and just go straight into the Jetson header. We'll also need a real-time clock for the TK1. If you're going to use a TX1 in this application, it already has the real-time clock built in. So one of the issues of actually using the LiDAR Lite version 2 in this particular project is that it is currently unavailable. Garmin bought the company that makes these and it's going to be a little while before they go back into production. There's a company called Terra Ranger who makes an IR emitter that works over time of flight that can sense off to about six meters when it's outside. So that may be one alternative to explore.